Thank you. The man arrested after running from the scene of last week's police shooting appeared in court today on unrelated charges. The court entered a not guilty plea for 31-year-old Darnell Harmon. He's facing three drug-related charges. Prosecutors have not filed any charges against him in connection to the police shooting. Police say he was in the car that was being chased by police. They say he ran during the shootout between police and a suspect who died at the scene. Two officers were shot. Both have been released from the hospital. An Indianapolis man has been sentenced to seven years in prison for fentanyl trafficking. Court documents say Corey Bussell threatened a woman visiting his home at 30th and Guilford Avenue. They say he told the woman to leave and fired a bullet into his lawn. IMPD located the bullet case and found the weapon was reported stolen in 2021. They also found a backpack filled with fentanyl and other drugs. Investigators learned that Bussell had prior convictions, including position, possession rather and resisting law enforcement. Another Indianapolis man has been sentenced for illegal gun trafficking. Court documents say D'Angelo Carnell bought guns and gave them to other people who legally couldn't buy them. The ATF says Carnell admitted to buying all but one of the guns for others. He said it was his sole source of income for more than a year. Bustle will now spend more than a year in prison, followed by three years probation. Well, the Supreme Court says it won't review an Indiana child molestation case where the suspect claims his rights were violated. Axel Diego was convicted on two counts of child molesting in 2021. He claims that his statements to police should not be allowed in court because of a language barrier. His attorneys argued his police interview contained several translation errors. The Indiana Court of Appeals ruled the interview uh, inadmissible. That decision was overturned by the state Supreme Court. Diego is serving a 30-year prison sentence. A power line measure on the governor's desk could mean higher utility bills. At least that's what consumer advocates say they fear. News 8's government reporter Garrett Berquist explains. The bill's supporters say it will play a key role in modernizing Indiana's electrical grid. But critics argue it's anti-competitive and could drive up your utility bills. The issue is who gets to bid on new electric transmission line projects. Utility companies already can control who bids on distribution lines, which go to homes and businesses. A bill on the governor's desk would expand that to cover the transmission lines. Those are the backbone of the nation's power grid. I don't think it's incumbent upon us as a legislature, legislature to put our thumb on the scale. We should open up that competition, which will hopefully um, drive down the rates of putting in these very expensive projects. State Senator Andy Zay serves on the Senate Utilities Committee. He says he fears the bill would reduce competition for the transmission line projects. That means more expensive projects paid for through higher utility bills. The utilities don't see it that way. Many of these projects are oftentimes over cost, as well as um, uh, uh, a pattern of, of, of time overruns as well. So for example, you know, one of the things that, that we've seen is um, delays ranging from several months on the low end to over four years on the high end when you have competitive solicitations. They say that means inflation could drive up costs. And they say the bill still allows contractors to competitively bid on individual parts of a transmission line project. The bill narrowly passed both chambers. It drew bipartisan support and bipartisan opposition. The parties who are going to profit from this couldn't make an intelligent arrangement among themselves and asked us to pick one side. Bill author Ed Soliday turned down News 8's request for an interview. His co-sponsors did not respond to interview requests. The measure has not yet officially been presented to the governor. Once it is, he will have seven days to act on it. At the State House, I'm Garrett Bergquist for Wish TV, wishtv.com and like us on Facebook. All right, let's talk a little weather now, shall we? Uh, turned out to be a pretty nice evening, a lot warmer now, Ryan, here at 6 o'clock than it was at 6 o'clock this morning, sir. My yeah, goodness. it was brutally cold waking mm -hmm. up this morning. Temperatures in the 20s, and in fact, we did tie a record low this morning. So the record low, 28 degrees set back in 1910. Not too often do you tie a record over 100 years old, but that's where we stood this morning. Our temperatures will be slightly warmer waking up tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we're likely waking up into the mid to upper 30s. Now, in terms of the forecast ahead, where I've looked at Cicero, you can see clouds have decreased in the last hour or so. So we're back to partly cloudy, mostly sunny skies besides areas in eastern Indiana still hanging on to some of those clouds. Temperatures in the low 50s.
We are now up to 53 degrees here in Indianapolis. That is our high temperature for today. We'll see if we climb in a degree or two in the next hour or so. 56 in Bloomington. Now, we do have rain chances to talk about, one of them being tomorrow. I'll have more on that rain chance coming up in a few minutes. Thank you. We will find out this summer if former President Donald Trump will face charges in Atlanta. The prosecutor is looking into whether Trump and his allies illegally meddled in the 2020 election in Georgia. The prosecutor did not say what her decision will be, but sent a letter to the county sheriff asking for heightened security. The letter said a decision would be coming between July and September. Two unexpected announcements today in the news world. The first was from Fox News. Fox says the network and host Tucker Carlson have agreed to part ways. No details have been released about that decision. This after Fox agreed to pay over $700 million for spreading lies about the 2020 election. Carlson has yet to comment. A short time later, CNN announced that it will part ways with anchor Don Lemon. Lemon said on Twitter that he found out from his agent, not management. CNN says they offered him a chance to meet, calling his version of events inaccurate. Lemon was widely criticized for comments he made in February about the age of politicians when Nikki Haley announced her run for president. The return of a rental assistance program next at 6 o'clock. How it aims to help people in Marion County who are facing eviction. Wish TV News, reaching more Indiana homes than any TV station in the state.